musicians and, uh, and artists. And, uh, and the one thing is, is that you, you sit in there and, and you're awe, in, in awe by, by the sound, the, the clarity of, of the sound, and you look around at this, uh, at this uh, venerable establishment. And then when, you, when you're watching an artist who is, you know, sort of kicking butt on stage and the place starts jumping and you're thinking, is this place going to hold together? <laughs> <laughs> so far, 117 years and a lot of performances later, we're still, we're still trucking on. What, was there not some discussion, and I don't know if it was recently, but at one point about tearing it down? Well, when Roy Thompson Hall was being built, it was called the New Massey Hall. And there was uh, actually no plan of attack as to what to do with the original Massey Hall. So uh, there was discussion then, uh, but it's, it's part of the culture of the city. And we don't have many buildings left of that era. No. And you start thinking of um, even the era of rock and roll, which presumably started in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, the two venues that were noted for it in Toronto were Maple Leaf Gardens and Massey Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be unthinkable to take down uh, the home of rock and roll in Toronto. Yeah, and, and Maple Leaf Gardens uh, got a lot of the bigger acts because obviously it can hold a lot more, but n nothing in terms of the acoustics. It, that's true. But, that's then, true. but then back in the 50s and 60s, too, the, 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 I, remember, I remember seeing the Beatles in, in the early 60s at, at Maple Leaf Gardens, and uh, it, it was a couple of... Fender um, amplifiers and uh, you know and screaming girls, so there really wasn't a lot of concern about the quality of that, the music. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Now, when, when did you get involved, and how long have you been involved with the, with the two halls now? Well, I was just telling Bill that it's uh, I'm bordering 20 years, wow. and that's a long time in our industry for uh, anybody to be in that kind of position. And, and so you obviously have. Uh, dozens of, of, of memories of, of memorable performances. What are some of them that, that stick out in your mind? Well, um, I often challenge people to uh, tell me their first uh, concert experience at Massey Hall. And I'll tell you quite honestly, mine was the uh, Dick Clark Road Show in 1964. Mm. And uh, the, it was called the Gene Pitney Show because he was the headliner. But uh, the Outsiders and Chad and Jeremy were on the bill. It was one of those uh, shows where uh, every act came on, did about four numbers, and then off the stage. And uh, Gene Pitney closed the show with about oh, a 45-minute set. And it was just heaven. But the next year I came back, and that was uh, one of fa two famous concerts by Bob Dylan. And Bob walked out on the stage to the first half, solo acoustic with a harmonica around his neck. And people cheered, and then he came out with a Toronto band, um, or a Toronto bass band, band. Levon and the Hawks was the yeah. group. And um, I was there to hear Positively Four Street and Like a Rolling Stone and all of those great, great songs from the 60s. Well, when did he uh, start playing the electric guitar? Because when, when he introduced the electric guitar, didn't, didn't, weren't people threatening to kill him or something? Oh, there, was, there were riots all over, you know, as, at his concerts around the world. I mean, there was just, just the folk community were up in arms over this. People booed that concert, yeah. not me. <laughs> what, what, what does it take to maintain a place?